ye of Lagash, behold the eternal brightness of the six suns. For the cold days come, and once again the cave of darkness shall swallow Lagash, and once again fire shall destroy your cities. For it is written in the book of Revelations, Lagash shall flourish for one hundred, two score years and ten. Proud shall be her cities, her days bright and warm. Then shall clever men learn the ways of the heavens. But on the day of cold and darkness, all people shall again become as snarling beasts, and all the works of man shall turn to blowing ashes. Time, 1189. Angle. 15 degrees, 63 minutes, 8 seconds. Plot it. How's it look, Pharaoh? Lagash still following the computed orbit? I don't know, Binet. The last three points have deviated slightly. See here? Hmm. Could be a sighting error. Yamaha, let's tighten up on those angle readings. Will do. Time, 12, 18. Angle. 15 degrees, 99 minutes even. How's that plot, Pharaoh? Just a minute. No, it's still deviating. I can't figure out what's happening. Yamada, are you calibrated there? Just checked it. Calibration's fine. Time, 12, 61. Angle, 16 degrees, 12 minutes, 49 seconds. 16, 12, my God, we're deviating way off the computed plot. Binet, I don't think it's just a deviation. What do you mean, not a deviation? Look, the deviation's a continuous curve. Here, I'll extrapolate it. God, what's happening? That's a completely different orbit. Take another reading. What's the time? 13.08. Angle. 16 degrees, 34 minutes, 74 seconds. And does that fall on the extrapolation? Exactly on. My God almighty. That can't be true. The law of gravitation says we should be on the computed orbit. And that law is not wrong. It's accounted for the orbits of each of the six suns. We know that, don't we, Binet? Don't we know that? I don't know. These are strange times. The weather gets colder by the month. Beta hangs up there now by itself for six hours at a time. Look at it. Red as blood. You'd never know it was a sun. Doesn't even give heat. The cult says it means the end of the world is near. Yesterday they said that it oh, was Oh, gonna... they're just a bunch of damn fanatics. I don't know. It's cold. Beta. Now we find that Lagash is on some inexplicable orbit. What are you going to tell Iton 77? The facts? What else can I tell him? The real question is what will Aton tell the Secretary of Science and Technology? Doesn't take much to panic him and his bureaucrats. Aton 77 here. The Secretary of Science and Technology has arrived, sir. He and the committee are in the conference room. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Ah, uh, Hatton. And members of the committee. So good of you to come up here today. Please be seated, everyone. Sure, each of you know Hatton, at least by reputation. I guess his greatest scientist, a pioneer in physical theory. I heard you lecture on solar physics. It was brilliant. You're almost generous, but I know you came to find out what's happening to our planet. That is quite correct, Aton. When we heard the news uh, about Lagash's orbit being off track, well, we got pretty worried. Of course. Let me give you the facts as a scientist sees them. Then I'm sure you'll agree there is no great cause for alarm. You've got the floor, Aton. Proceed. Let's look at this chart. Here you see the entire universe, six suns and our planet, Lagash. Here is Alpha, the primary sun, and Beta, Gamma, Delta, and so on. Notice that all seven bodies in the universe have different orbits. Now, these orbits have been observed for hundreds of years, but we couldn't explain why they differed until 18 years ago when we discovered the law of universal gravitation. <clears throat> You're too modest, Ayrton. You discovered that law, and in doing so, explained the motion of the entire universe. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, but I must decline part of that praise. 
It's true that the law of gravitation accounts for the orbits of all six suns. The mystery is that it doesn't explain Lagash's orbit. Look, the law of gravitation says that Lagash's orbit should follow this dotted curve. In fact, it follows this solid curve here. But those orbits are practically identical. The reports I heard made it sound as if we were sailing off into darkness. Darkness? <laughs> That's the kind of superstition the Book of Revelations preaches. Fortunately, people these days are enlightened enough not to be stampeded into that kind of nonsense. All except the cult. Yes, all except the cult. Getting back to Lagash's orbit, Aton, why can't your law of gravitation explain it? Quite frankly, I don't know. That's the mystery of it. I'm sure the law itself is valid. No, I, I rather think there's some unknown factor that we haven't accounted for. Sounds a bit scary. You mean there's some mysterious force acting upon Lagash? Well, yes. Although it's probably not as mysterious as it seems now. Tell us, Atom, how do you plan to track down this uh, thing, whatever it is? We're looking into everything, Mr. Secretary. For example, we're even going to pay the cult a visit. The cult? <laughs> I thought that would surprise you. You see, their high priest, Sor Five, keeps an extensive collection of very old scrolls in the cult temple. Now, we've known for years that Lagash's civilizations have been periodically destroyed by fire. Some of these civilizations were highly advanced. If Sor's collection contains clues left behind by earlier scientists, we want to know about it. Well, Atom, you certainly have dispelled a lot of apprehensions. This committee is impressed, as usual, with your logical approach to the problem. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, members of the committee, for your vote of confidence. I am reminded of a quote from the great Gashon. When the prism of the mind commands, even the mighty suns form in colored ranks. We've got many fine minds working on this. I'm sure we shall prevail. Thank you. Thank you. I said, what do you want? To see Saur Five. He's your boss, isn't he? Saur Five is the high priest of the most mystical cult. <laughs> Only the initiated may see. But I have an appointment. Aton 77 set it up with Saur. You are a scientist? Yes, from the observatory. I don't believe Saur would stoop to see you. Latimer, that will do. Come in. I'm Saur Five. I assume you're Binet 25? He is a scientist, Your Holiness. I know that, Latimer. Now, go fetch us some tapers. Come in, Binet. Sorry about Latimer. He's rather protective of me. So I noticed. Aton told me you've not made much progress on your unknown factor, or whatever you call it. No, we haven't. You know, I never thought much about the cult or the book of revelations, but after this, well, maybe you can help explain things. Ah, here's Latimer. What are those things for? I'll take them, Latimer. These are called tapers, Binet. They give light in the dark. You mean dark? <laughs> You're just like all the other unbelievers, aren't you? You can't imagine a world without light, without the sun's always shining. No, and I don't want to. Darkness is... Well, it's creepy. Anyway, it's light enough in here. What do we need those tapers for? I'm afraid the information you want is in our vaults. It is pretty dim down there. No, now wait. I'm not going... Not if it's dark. Then why don't you go away instead? Latimer... You may leave. Now. Yes, Your Holiness. Now, we were talking about the vaults. Well, if it's the only way to get the information, I guess I'll have to go. Good. Let me light your taper. And mind. There we are. Shall we go? Hold your taper up, Binet. I know you crave light, but holding it close to your face won't help you see. That's better. How are you feeling? Uh, I, I seem to be having trouble breathing. Damn this darkness. It crushes you. Here we are. You'll need both hands. Put your taper in the bracket there. In here are all the scrolls upon which the Book of Revelations is based. You want to know where Lagash is going? What will happen to us? In here is your answer. My God, these must be hundreds of years old. Thousands. Look at this one. 
third cycle. Third But that would make it 6,000 years old. Here, I'll translate it for you. Ta yagadar edmanis, undel woknum in herath wega. Roughly, it is a description of the great darkness that comes every 2,050 years. First, a beta is alone in the sky, and it gets very cold. And then comes the sacred moment. Listen. Beautiful, isn't it? I don't know. What does it mean? It came to pass that the cave of darkness fell upon Lagash, and there was no light. Men were even as blinded. And in this blackness there appeared the stars in countless numbers, and to the strains of music of such beauty that the very trees cried out in wonder. And in that moment men's souls departed from them, and their abandoned bodies became as wild beasts in the streets. From the stars there then reached down the heavenly flame, and where it touched, the cities of Lagash burned in utter destruction, till of the works of man nothing remained. You believe this is about to happen again? Darkness and holocaust and stars? I know it will happen again. I see. Uh, what about these stars you speak of? What exactly are they? Stars are divine lights that receive the souls of the faithful. And what about this cave of darkness? What is it? It also is divine. It will swallow the gash. Yeah, sure, but where is it now? Ah, uh, there is an ancient description of the cave in the Mova scroll fragment. Here. It's from the fifth cycle. It begins in mid-sentence. Thealan tigrundig, ta meovid sedorke edge dasharund oferbeta, und al folka, and so on. Now, literally, that says that the dark edge of the cave was round like a plate. That's all it says? <laughs> Well, there's more about the stars. The Heofana Shinoda Mid... Uh, look, so we don't put much credence in the notion of stars at the observatory. Notion? Look, so if there were stars up there, we'd see them, right? After all, our conditions of observation are just about perfect. But with six suns giving uninterrupted light, it's not as if we were working in the dark, you know. So, we're pretty sure that stars are... Uh, well, you know, it's just a different point of view. Then your interest in the cult was merely scientific. Look, so. Aton sent me here. I, I, I'm sorry if I wasted your time. God, this darkness is terrible. Let's, let's go back. Yes. I think it is time you go now. Latimer. Yes, Your Holiness. Show this man out. Look, I apologize if I... This offended. way. Whatever we find, we'll pass it on to you. Are you all right, Your Holiness? That man is all mind. Beware of such intellectuals, Latimer. You can never trust them. Think, Benet, what were Sor's exact words? Uh, well... He was translating a description of the Cave of Darkness, and it said, um, according to Saw, that the edge was round like a plate. You're sure he said plate? Yeah, why? Plate. The fifth cycle word for that is Dasha, which also means disc. I don't see what you're driving at, Aton. Binet, the man who wrote that scroll wasn't describing a cave. He says a dark disc moved across Beta. Now, that could have been a sphere. A sphere? Big enough to cover Beta. If it were close enough to Lagash. But Aton, if it were that big, we'd see it. God, it'd be huge. <laughs> anyway, what does this have to do with explaining Lagash's orbit? Think it through, Binet. If there were another mass out there, it would skew our orbit. But we'd see it, Aton. We'd see it. Would we? What if there were another non-luminous planetary body like Lagash? The constant light of the suns would make it invisible. Binet, I want you to work this out on the contrometer. Whatever you say, you're the boss. Anyway, I've heard so many strange ideas today. What's one more? And it came to pass in those days that the sun, Beta, held lone vigil in the sky for ever longer periods as the revolutions passed. 
until such time as for full half a revolution, it alone, shrunken and cold, shone down upon Lagash. And men did assemble in the public square to debate and marvel at the sight. For a strange depression had seized them. Their minds were troubled and their speech confused. For the souls of men awaited the coming of the stars. Where's Aton? He's in a meeting. He... Hey, hey, you can't go in there. Without reaching above budget, look. Yes, Benet? No, I'm sorry, Aton, but I've got to see you. Very well, if it's that urgent. Excuse me. What the devil do you mean, bursting in there like that? That's the budget director. I just finished the computations. Aton, you were right. There's got to be something up there. Look. Look, here's its orbit. This is fantastic. And here's its size, relative to Lagash. Incredible, Benet. This is incredible. An invisible moon. And What's wrong, Benet? Look at the last page. My God. Oh, my God. The comptometer just kicked it out. I couldn't believe it either. But if the other calculations are correct, and I know they are, then this moon will definitely pass in front of Beta. And because of the moon's proximity to Lagash, it will totally eclipse Beta. Will Beta... Alone in the sky? Yeah, it will. Then there will be total darkness? Total. And guess how often it happens. What does the Book of Revelation say? Every 2,050 years? They were very close. 2,049. That explains the Book of Revelation's predictions and the Cave of Darkness. Atta. Atta, are you finished? I'll be there in a minute. But this is fantastic, Binet. Imagine science explaining the book of Revelations. How many years till the next eclipse? Not years, Anton. Months. Two months. Two months? And we have a... We have a lot of work ahead of us. There's still a great deal we don't know. Atta. I'm coming. Right now. <laughs> Invisible moon. Aton, do you realize what people will say when we tell them there's an invisible moon up there? <laughs> They're going to laugh us right out of town. I can't help that. The facts are the facts. And you say this, what do you call it? The eclipse. This eclipse will last 14 hours. How about that? Total darkness. I can't feature darkness. What's it like? Well, we don't know either. We're bringing in a psychologist to brief us. Aton, do you realize you're supporting everything the cult professes? No. No, we're not. All we're saying is that every 2,000 years or so, there's a brief, perfectly explainable phenomenon. We're not predicting the end of the world, you know. Well, I've got to make a decision. Since your eclipse is due in just two months, we'll release your, uh, your prediction at once. But there's going to be a lot of bad press. They're going to ridicule us. God, they're going to ridicule us, just like the cult. I don't think so, Mr. Secretary. After all, people are reasonable. When they see that our approach makes sense, they'll cooperate fully. I hope so, Aton. Good Lord, I hope so. Do not be deceived, my brethren, by the logic of Aton 77. Aton says there is no cave of darkness, only an invisible moon. As if something transparent could shroud this wicked planet. But I say unto you, the stars shall appear, and to the strains of music and the heavenly flame shall purge Lagash. Amen. And the souls of the faithful shall depart their bodies, and they shall wander the streets as beasts of the field. Amen. That's him. Come in. Good day, gentlemen. You are sure in 501? Yes, and you must be Aton. The Aton. This is a pleasure. Meet my associate, Benet 25. Welcome aboard. Sit down, Sheeran. Sheeran, 
We asked you here because there are certain psychological ramifications of the coming eclipse which we're uncertain about. Specifically, we have no idea how people will react to the phenomenon of total darkness. Gentlemen, I, I could theorize about that subject all day, but I think a first-hand experience will make the point more clearly. Can we draw the curtains? I'll get them. Now, this is about 70% of total darkness. How do you feel? What happened? I, I, I can't breathe. The, wa the walls are, are closing in. Okay, let's open the curtains. <sighs> what we all experienced just then was a psychological phenomenon called claustrophobia. Fear of the dark. So that's what happened to me in the temple vault. Then that's how people will react to the eclipse. No. No. The reaction will be much worse because the darkness will be total and sustained. How will they react? Pass the tape recorder. Thank you. You remember the tunnel of mystery over at Jonglor City? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's shut down now, but while it was open, it was a mile-long thrill ride through total darkness. Some thrill. Certain people said it was mind-expanding. In fact, it was mind-shattering. Comor 17. He was 25 when he took his only ride. Later that day, he refused to enter his house and slept on the lawn. When his roommates forced him inside, he went into hysterics and beat his head against the wall. The next day, he was admitted to the Saro City Psychiatric Hospital. He'll be there for the rest of his life. I made this recording during one of Comor's therapy sessions. I put him under hypnosis so that he could relive his ride through the tunnel of mystery. We're in the car that takes you through the tunnel, and I put my arm around Annette. The car starts, and we're entering the tunnel. L l like a mouth. Ahead, it's black. T totally black. And I'm holding Annette's shoulder hard. And the, the tunnel mouth is shrinking. The car is rocking, and, and I can't see. Can't breathe. Oh, God. Somebody. I, I'm going to drown. Give me light. Please, God, please. No, 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 no. No, no. Atan, was this the important evidence you were going to present to this committee, the ravings of a lunatic? Mr. Secretary... Shirin 501 here is an eminent psychologist. He played this tape for us at the observatory and explained its significance. I think you should let him do the same. Very well, Shirin. Proceed. Mr. Secretary, members of the committee, the young man you just heard is only one of hundreds of people whose minds were shattered in that tunnel. And there are other cases, people lost in caves, locked in closets or, or cellars, all with the same terrifying symptoms. Well... What's wrong with them? In a word, they've been driven mad. Victims of a condition known as claustrophobia. Claustro what? That's a psychologist's term for man's instinctive fear of absence of light. It's, it's usually associated with closed places, like the tunnel of mystery. I really don't see where all of this is leading. To one crucial point, Mr. Secretary. Our civilization is not the first to be engulfed by this eclipse, and people will react as civilizations before us have. And how have they reacted, Sharon? Claustrophobia will drive civilization insane, Mr. Secretary. Everybody, Sharon? Do you mean the whole world will go mad? The masses will take to the streets. In their fear of the dark, they will set fires to make light. They will, they will burn everything and, and anything until our civilization lies in ashes. That, gentlemen, is the true meaning of the Book of Revelations. Oh, Sharon, darkness can't be that bad. You mean you're afraid to believe it can be that bad. But imagine darkness everywhere, no light, as far as the eye can see. The houses, the trees, the fields, the earth, the sky, black and stars thrown in, whatever they are. Can you conceive that? Yes, I can. You lie! Your brain can't conceive that any more than, than it can grasp infinity or eternity. You can only talk about it. When the eclipse comes, your brain will be presented with a phenomenon outside the limits of its comprehensions. You will go mad completely and permanently. There's no question about it. Atom, you can't support this. I this. do. It's happened to every other civilization, and it will happen again in just two weeks. Then listen to me, Atom. 
Each time you come in here, you have changed your mind. And with every change, you come closer and closer to the absurd superstitions of the cult. The facts are the facts, Mr. Secretary. Facts? Show me a fact. I'll welcome a fact. Oh, you've given me a theory. In two weeks, Mr. Secretary, you'll have your facts. We're going to photograph the eclipse, and our pictures will prove to all future civilizations that we were right. I'd invite this committee to see the results, but I'm afraid you'll be too deranged by that time to understand. How dare you insult us? Here! Take your recording of your ridiculous theories and get out! I told you they wouldn't listen. It's basic psychology, rejection of foreign stimuli. Oh, psychology be damned! These people are irrational bigots. But by God, they'll see soon enough. The universe obeys immutable laws, even as the committee is too blind to understand them. Behold the eye of Beta, red and alone in the sky. Even as it is prophesied, the sky is bloody and the wind is cold. Yet even now, obscene science mouths the ultimate blasphemy, saying, your souls will not rise to the stars, but you will go insane. <laughs> I say, science is insane. Dangerous men use science to destroy faith. Let them be warned. The laws have been written. Whatever be their punishment, it is just. Come in. Shut the door. Did you hear my exhortation today, Latimer? Yes, Your Holiness. What are you going to do about it, Latimer? Whatever you command, Holiness. Look at Beta, Latimer. How alone and angry it seems. Like you, Latimer. Beta, the avenging son, cold and dipped in blood. Did you know that Aton plans to take pictures today of the Cave of Darkness? Pictures? And use those pictures to ridicule us? Ridicule people like you, Latimer, who truly believe. The pig. I wish, Latimer, there were someone who could stop them. I'm too old. But I used to be young, like you, Latimer. Strong, alone, and angry. Let me go for you, Your Holiness. I cannot make that decision for you, Latimer. Then I will go to the observatory, Your Holiness. I will go now. Seventy-five, the custodian. Don't worry, he won't. God damn it, you mutt! Hey, hey, who's that? Hey, hey what, what are you two, Pharaoh? You mutt? What? Aren't you supposed to be at the observatory helping with the eclipse? What, what's this thing? Say, what? What are you two up to? Shumple, we're conducting a fantastic experiment. With this contraption? Yeah. You see, it's a model of what the sky will look like when the eclipse comes. It's due in ten hours, you know. Oh, that's a pile of crap. This contraption is another one of that crazy Atom's ideas. Oh, Aton doesn't even know about this. Yeah, no kidding. Go on, take a look inside. Well, what do you call this thing? It's a solar dome. Too dark in here, can't see a thing. Yeah, that's what the eclipse will look like. Stuffy as hell in here. Now watch this. What the hell are those things? They're stars. Bullshit! There are holes in the top of this thing. You just uncovered them with that switch there. Yeah, but they look like stars. At least what the cult says they'll look like. Well, so? Well, we wanted to see what happens when somebody looks at the stars. You know, do you go crazy? Does your soul fly away? You see? Yeah, well, what happened? Well, that's just it. Nothing happened. You built this contraption just to learn that? Yeah. A scientific experiment. Ah, oh, shit, I could have told you that. And you guys get paid for doing this kind of work? Well, this was our own idea. 
Waste of time. Well, got to finish my rounds. Tell you one thing, though. Ain't healthy in that contraption. It's too stuffy. You can't hardly breathe. <laughs> Yes? Which way to the observatory? Uh, just a minute. I'll get my husband. Calmer, there's a strange looking man at the door. I'll, He's... I'll handle it. Yes, what? What do you want? Which way to the observatory? Down that way. First left. Thanks. Uh, you, uh, you work there? No, no, I don't work there. Well, uh, I'm gonna shut the door, keep the heat in. Uh, pretty cold, you know. Behold the eye of Beta! <laughs> what? Alone and bloody in the sky! Uh, now, now look, fella, you, you run along now. were told to be here, at the observatory. Instead, you're messing around with fake stars. The eclipse is due in half an hour. Yes, sir. Farrow, you had no authority to conduct such a dangerous experiment. Gimot, why did you do it? We wanted to get an advanced notion of what the eclipse would look like. From what Sharon says, we thought we'd feel something. And did you? Can I get to the observatory through this door? Sorry, nobody's allowed in today. Hey. What are you do? Uh. Goddamn luck! Why doesn't the gun have a key? I'll break this damn thing. stayed in your, what do you call it, uh, star dome for ten minutes, and nothing happened? No. Sharon, what about that? I thought darkness and stars were supposed to drive us mad. Now, now wait. Let, let's think this through. Gentlemen, we have no time for this. The eclipse is due in 25 minutes. <laughs> Everyone get to his station. Wait, I think I have it. Have what? Why Yamats and Pharaoh's experiment failed. Sharon, this will have to wait. The eclipse is due any minute. But, but, but there's a logical explanation. No, it's too late for... What was that? Someone smashing the instruments. Stop him. I got... I've got him. I got him! Who the hell do you think it... It's you. Adam! Pig! Why, you wait! Who is this? I am Latimer, 25. Adjutant of the third class to his holiness, Saw 5. Smash the telephone terminal. The telephone terminal? Isn't it part of the solar scope? You people don't even know that. Let him go, Siren. All right, Latimer, why? Did Saw 5 send you? I won't answer that question. Are there more of you on the way? I said I won't answer. Look, young man, the eclipse is due in ten minutes. What does your master want of me? I fulfilled my end of the bargain. Ah. We ask him for data. In return, we've proved the essential creed of the cult. There was no need to prove that. It stands proven by the Book of Revelation. But I have given scientific backing to your beliefs. Pig. You so-called scientific explanation of our beliefs makes them useless. You made darkness, the stars, everything, natural phenomenon. That is blasphemy! That's not my fault. The facts are the facts. Your facts are fake. How do you know? I know. Now, oh, for God's sake. I swear to you, you will never succeed. Never. Get this idiot out of here. Someone call the police. We don't have time. Look, he's a cult member. They pride themselves on their honor. Make him swear there will be no more violence. How, how about it, Latimer? I refuse to give any such promise. Wait, I'll handle this. Come over here, Latimer. It's okay. Come on. Now, look, you bastard. If you don't promise like he said, I'm going to lock you in that closet, and you won't see anything. No 
eclipse. No darkness and no stars. You get me? No stars. What? Oh, I'd love to. So if I've told me what happens if you don't see the stars, you lose your immortal soul, right? You pig. So, if you want to lose your goddamn soul, just don't make any promises, you understand me? You pig. Now get over there and tell that time you swear to be good, or else... Damn you for all this. Hey, Atom, Latimer has an announcement. I give my word that I won't try to destroy your, your equipment here. Good, good. Well, that's out of the way. Now, Benet, I... Benet? Benet, what, what's the matter? Look. It's... It's begun. My God. The eclipse... Started. Everyone to their post. Damn, missed the beginning. Heed the words of the prophet Vendret too. Lo, ye sinners, though ye scorn the ways of righteousness, yet will the time of reckoning come. Even now the cave of darkness comes to swallow the gash and all it contains. Do you believe the book of Revelations? This is the Secretary of Science and Technology. Why haven't you connected me to the observatory? I don't answer. For God's sake, what the hell is Atom doing up there? He's to blame for this, Mr. Secretary. The crowds out there are flocking to the coat. Atom scared the wits out of them. Now the coat's their only hope. It's almost dark. We're on the verge of anarchy. And Atom refuses to help. Well, by God, I'll have the son of a bitch arrested for treason. People of Saro City, it is not too late to show your new love for the faith. Go up to the high places, destroy the instruments of science, destroy the infidel, destroy... Destroy! 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 destroy. destroy. Sit down, Sharon. You make me nervous. Waiting for totality is bad enough. I can't get Pharaoh and Yamat's experiment out of my mind. A couple of crazy kids. No. What they saw was almost an exact replica of the stars as described in the Book of Revelations, but with no effects. And by the way, you were about to explain that when Latimer busted in. Yes. I was about to say we mustn't take the Book of Revelations too literally. It might be that in the presence of total darkness, the mind finds it absolutely necessary to create light. Mm. This illusion of light might be all the stars there really are. You know, it's funny you've been thinking about stars. So have I. What do you think they are? Well, it's kind of a crazy theory, but... Uh... Go ahead. Let's hear it. Well, suppose there were other suns in the universe. What am I saying? No, please. I want to hear. Well, these suns be so far away that they would they'd be too far to see what with our sun shining all the time but wouldn't we feel their gravitational pull well, not if they were far enough off i mean really far off maybe four light years say there were a lot of suns that far off maybe a dozen or two uh-huh during an eclipse there'd be no real sunlight to drown them out since they're so far off they'd appear small like so many marbles of course, the cultists talk of millions of stars, but that's probably an exaggeration. There just isn't enough room in the universe for a million suns, unless they touched one another. You know, exaggeration is exactly what would happen. Our mind can't grasp directly any number higher than five. Above that, there's only the concept of many. A dozen would become a million, just like that. Well, anyway, that's something to think about during the time we have left. Yeah. Beta's almost gone. The lights turned all red. Dark red. Here comes Atom. I wonder what he might have said about our theories. We'll never know, I guess. What a mind he's got. Lagash will not soon again see his likes. Binet, what's Atom got there? Hmm? Oh, you mean those. Those are tapers. Is that what they are? They're so beautiful. Why don't they burn out? They're reeds soaked in animal fat. Makes them burn slowly. 
Hello, gentlemen. Here. You'll want one of these. It'll be dark soon. Thanks, Aton. Make it last. Soon these tapers will be the only light on Lagash. Whew. Even that little flame feels good. God, it's cold. And dark. Beta is almost gone now. So's our world. Listen to him. A maniac. We had a bright world. We were on the edge of great discoveries. And now, lunatics and morons will inherit it all. Beta looks so cold. There's an old third cycle word for it, gentlemen. Nicht fehlen. It means nightfall. Night. That must have been their word for darkness. Shh. What's that? I'll go see what it is. Oh, good Lord. What is it? Look. I thought so. The mob come to destroy my observatory. Look at it, gentlemen. A shadowy snake of human flesh coiling up the hill. Well, this place is built like a fort. We'll bolt the doors, gentlemen, and light the torches. Bolt the doors and light the torches. Bolt the doors and light the torches. I, I can't believe this is happening. Come on, Sharon, let's lock up the ground floor. Wait! Oh, I can't breathe! You go on! No, 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 hang on. I'll get the taper. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, oh. Sharon, I've got the taper. Now get a hold of yourself. Light. Thank God. I, I, I couldn't help it, Binet. The, the darkness just crushes you. Here, you hold the taper. Come on. Thank God. They're here already. Make sure the window bars and doors are secure. Okay. Binet, this door's been jimmied. Where? Here. Must be how Latimer got in. Damn him. No way to barricade it except with furniture. Sharon? Come on, help drag up the table. What? Oh. Oh, sorry. Wedge it in there. Back there. Benet! Benet! Uh, uh, down here. Bait is going out. Get up here. Bait is going out. Now, get it straight, all of you. Binet will photograph Beta just before totality. The rest of you, uh, be ready to shoot anything else that's up there. And remember, you might see a star. If so, don't waste time trying to get two at a time. One is enough. If you feel yourself going, get away from the camera. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Shirin, are you all right? Uh, I can't. I can't. Here, let me help you to my office. What's wrong? I saw something waiting. I don't see anything. Again, listen. Who's that? Though ye scorn the ways of righteousness, Satan, yet will the time of reckoning come. Wait, Vladimir, you swore you. Oh, oh. Yet will the time of reckoning. You leave Atan alone. Ah! Sure, thank God. Sheriff, for God's sake, you'll, you'll kill him. Yes, with my bare hands. Where's your throat, Latimer? No. There, got it. Got it. No. Got it. No, no. Sheriff, you killed him. Could you? Sheriff. Sheriff? Wise and thoughtful colleague, you are gone. Savaged by the very passion you drained from lesser minds than yours. What happened? I heard screams. Latimer is dead. Sheeran is mad. And that mob out there, they want blood, Binet. Blood! Beta is almost out, Anton. Come back to the solar scope. But the world is ordered, Binet. There are reasons why the heavens move. It makes no sense that among all things, the mind of man alone should 
Obey no laws. I don't wait. Listen. There's something wrong at the solar scope. Pharaoh, what's going on here? Pharaoh? Pharaoh! Stop! 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 What's he saying? Oh, my God. I... Look. Stars. Stars. Everywhere, stars. There'll be ten. Maybe twenty. No. It's thirty thousand stars. Thirty thousand suns. God, Benet. God, we, we were doomed. All along, doomed. We, we, we didn't know anything. We thought six suns in a universe was all, but, but people, people need to believe, too. So, so the cult was part of our fate, too, just, just like the invisible moon. And we didn't know. The stars di didn't notice it. it. Darkness forever and ever and ever. And, 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 the, and the walls. The walls are breaking in. They're, they're trying to break in. Bolt bol the doors. Light the heavens. Light the heavens! Oh, oh. That too. Oh, my God, his mind. His mind. Oh, God, it's so dark. Please, bring back the light. Bring back the light. Fire. Where's the taper? Where's the taper? Help me! What's that? Lights! Sarah City, it's on fire! Look at it, everyone! It's beautiful! Beautiful, look at it! Look, look at it, you idiots! Pharaoh, Yamot, Shira, and Arton, look at it! Oh. Oh. Please? Say something? Say something! <laughs> In the valley of Segron, I saw them, city upon city heaped, while the sun stared down with empty eyes. Now crows scream from gutted walls, dust gathers in the vaults, and at evening come single shepherds. By their flocks they rest to play on melancholy flutes, while goats graze idly in the ruin of our days. My name is Ben Bova. I'm the editor of Analog Science Fiction Science Facts magazine, and we are sitting in the living room of Dr. Isaac Asimov, the author of Nightfall. And Isaac, there's a question I've always wanted to ask you about this story. Nightfall was written in 1941, and I've heard you say many times since then that you hate it. Why do you hate this story? Well, perhaps hate is too strong a word. Let us say I quiver with apprehension when someone mentions the story because I feel they're going to say, gee, that was the best story you ever wrote. And I wrote it when I was very young. I was 21 years old, just starting out. I hadn't written anything yet which had made much of a mark. And then I wrote Nightfall, and suddenly my reputation was made. But 
35 years have passed since then, and I've written many more stories, and it's depressing to be told that's my best story. It makes me feel as though I've had a long anticlimactic life since. <laughs> I know one question that many students will want answered. Uh, where can they find a copy of Nightfall? Probably the easiest place to get it, and the easiest way of finding it, is to get my own book, Nightfall and Other Stories, in which it is the first story. And Nightfall and Other Stories is out now as a faucet paperback, and I imagine that it's possible to get it in any large paperback store. Why do, why do you think this uh, st particular story has uh, aroused such emotion in the readers? Well, it's a peculiar kind of story, and I take no credit whatsoever for writing it. Uh, actually, the idea was John Campbell's. He came up with a quotation from Emerson, which talked about what might happen if men could see stars only once in a thousand years. Emerson thought that it would cause them to fall to their knees and worship and exclaim at the beauty of the, king of the city of God. And Campbell asked me what I thought would happen, and with my usual fast intelligence, I said, I don't know. <laughs> and, and he said, I think it would drive people crazy. Now go home and write the story. He really said it just like that. And I trotted home, because one never thought of disobeying John Campbell. I trotted home and wrote the story, and he paid me a bonus for it. Uh, which was the first bonus I ever got. It was very exciting. Got a check for 25% more than I was supposed to get, and I was scared to put it in the bank because I thought he'd made a mistake, and I called him up, and he told me it was a bonus, and I could put <laughs> it in the bank. But the way I wrote the story, you see, it was told quite like a Greek tragedy, although I wasn't smart enough to know that's what I did. It, was, it dealt with the last four hours before the total eclipse, and everything else was told in conversation between people, and there was, and no scene ended sharply. Everything was interrupted before the natural conclusion, so that the reader, in reading the story, just passed on from one stage of the toboggan ride to the next, going down at an ever-increasing rate until there was a crash at the bottom. You were being told all along there was going to be a crash at the bottom, but most people who read stories expect a happy ending. Somehow I'm going to pull out. And so you go faster and faster and faster down, thinking you're going to pull out, and you're never doing it. It's this big crash at the end. And I think that's what gets everybody. By the time they finish, it takes them like 15 minutes of shaking in their chair before they're finally brought to themselves. I say this because after 10 years of having people tell me that, uh, that Nightfall was the best story I had ever written, I decided to go back and read it and see what there was about it, because in my memory it was just a story. And I read it, and this is what it looked like. And I said to myself, gee, if I were to write it now with all the extra experience I've got, I could do a much better job of it, and it wouldn't be anywhere near as good a story. So that I think that what I did in that story was to just, uh, completely by accident, and without knowing what I was doing, just hit it just right. And that's why I don't take any credit, because there was no intelligence in it, no craft in it. It's just plain you dumb just luck. You just said at the typewriter and the words came out all by themselves. Well, yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> but I didn't know what I was doing then. It just, just, it just, just came out. Now I see what I did. But was, I the, was the story published exactly as you wrote it? Were there any changes made or rewrites? There was one change made. Uh, in the last scene in Aton 77, in the book it was Aton 77 who made the last speech, John Campbell put in his own rhetoric, which was very good. And as a matter of fact, in one recent, in one recent anthology of the story, the anthologist picked out Campbell's speech as an example of the fact that I could write poetically, even in my early days, <laughs> which, which bothered me a <laughs> lot. Blow. Uh, but also in that one speech in the book, uh, John made a mistake, which embarrassed me. I wouldn't have made it. He referred to Earth. Oh, now, yes. Now, all through, you see, there's no reference to Earth. This is a strange world, a different world. They don't know anything about Earth, and they're not supposed to know. And I've always felt that that one reference was a flaw, but uh, I've never changed it somehow. I don't dare change anything about the story. Nightfall strikes me as a very pessimistic story. Uh, are you a pessimist? Do you think that darkness always wins? No, as a matter of fact, in my stories, I'm an optimist. And what sometimes people forget about Nightfall is that it was optimistic. 
because one thing in the story that was left out of the dramatization was that they were setting up a refuge with artificial light that was going to last for 14 hours or more, and that in this world of insanity, there, was going, there were going to be a number of people who will have survived the darkness with their minds intact, with their memories intact, and that the next cycle of civilization would start with all the knowledge that the previous cycle had gained, and that by the time the eclipse came again, it would be possible to protect the entire world and that the long darkness would never come again. So that actually it was an upbeat ending, an optimistic one. But it is lost in the general crash. I mean, the fact that that ending yes. is there. Yes. Here's a question from left field, but one that I've always wanted to ask you. You've, you've been very successful at writing short stories and very successful at writing novels. Very few writers can do each with such facility. Uh, that's true, but science fiction, you know, science fiction is peculiar in that respect. Uh, in science fiction, you have a much greater latitude than in any other form of literature. Science fiction actually has no limits whatever. Science fiction lures you on to do things that are unthinkable in anything else. If I sound as though I'm a science fiction chauvinist, I am. I think there is no form of, uh, no form of fiction in the world that it is, is as broad, as all-encompassing as science fiction. And you can take a short story of just perhaps 5,500 words, and as I did in the last question, you can cover 10 trillion years of human history and finally end with God appearing on the scene. It's uh, my favorite story, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Isaac. And why don't you write another story like Nightfall someday? Oh, I wish I knew <laughs> how. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. It was a pleasure to listen to this.